All right, I just got this new laptop from work and I thought that it'd be kind of fun to show you guys how I set up an environment for my design and development needs. Although I don't really own this laptop, uh, it is basically how I set up my typical personal laptop as well. This one's gonna be a long video, so as always, timestamps are down below if you're interested in a specific topic. With that out of the way, let's get it. Back in 2014, I was given my first MacBook by work and it was basically something that I had to get used to and use. Prior to that, I was a Windows user for my entire life. After a bit of adjustment to the OS, I slowly but surely started preferring Macs. The OS was nicer for my workflow. Since it's a unique system, it made development much easier. Back in the day, my main tool of choice for UI design was Adobe Fireworks, which was basically like Sketch. But of course, Adobe killed Fireworks at the time, which forced me to change to Sketch, and Sketch is a Mac-only app. The hardware of Apple at the time was nicer, although I think Windows has come a really long way since then, with hardware from both Microsoft Surface Series and Razer. And of course, Apple's ecosystem. I don't even need to talk about that. It's just a great experience. So the choice for changing to a MacBook made sense then and it still kind of makes sense today and that's why I've been sticking to it. I do not own a desktop computer per se. Instead, I just plug my laptop into external monitors and this way I can be mobile and work from anywhere by simply unplugging my laptop and taking it with me. I use my laptop for seven specific purposes. Number one, design. That's my full-time job. Number two, development. That's sometimes my job, although mostly it's because I do it as a hobby. Number three, content creation. So that's just the stuff that you guys are seeing right now. Number four, personal consumption, entertainment, and online shopping. I'm gonna categorize all of those in the same category. Number five, managing my finances. Number six, productivity. And number seven, education, learning, and self-improvement. Before we jump into the apps, I'm not really gonna be covering the browser-based apps in this video as the list for that is quite long and that could just be its own video, which I might do in the future. When setting up, I do prefer the look and feel of dark mode and that's what I choose. The first things I usually do is to change the mouse direction, change the tap behavior, change the right click behavior. And by the way, these are mostly my old preferences from Windows. Get rid of all the apps that I don't use, swap them with the ones that I do use most often, get rid of view most recent apps, move my tabs to the left hand side of the screen and change them to auto hide. This way I have more real estate. That's basically it for the general macOS setup. My browser of choice at the moment is Chrome. I've tried many other browsers before like Firefox, Firefox Developer Edition, Opera, Brave, and Safari, but always found myself coming back to Chrome. The ability to sync across multiple devices, great developer tools, how fast the browser runs, available plugins, how often and seamless the updates are, and the browser support are my main reasons. But I also use a lot of Google apps for productivity, communication, file management, and more. And for some mysterious reason, they work best on Chrome. The amount of times that I've ran into issues with Google Meets and Google Drive while using Firefox or other browsers other than Chrome, it's not even funny. Slack. For internal team chats, this is what we use. I've used this and Microsoft Team in the past and they're both great. However, I do prefer Slack a little bit more, though I think that's just because I've used it more and therefore am just more used to it. I use the Notes app to capture thoughts, meeting notes, write these videos, and create checklists for my day-to-day -day activities. It's a great tool as it syncs across all of my Apple devices like my iPhone, my iPad, and my MacBook, and I also have immediate access to them with a single click. As for desktop apps, I only have two that I use for entertainment and content consumption. Number one, YouTube Music. And I know I might be the only one in the world that uses this app, but I get it in my YouTube premium subscription and never had the reason to also pay for another music subscription service like Apple Music or Spotify. I use the Podcasts app for listening to, well, podcasts. 
I do mostly front-end development, very little back-end development, and recently picked up Flutter for native app development, mostly because of a recent project. My current stack for web development at the moment is the React library used with the Next.js framework for most of the front-end development, styled components for styling, Versol for testing apps, creating prototypes and hosting, Firebase if I have database or authentication needs, GitHub for code management and maintenance, and Sanity or Contentful if I need a content management system. Some other apps that I use for development are iTerm2. This is my preferred terminal that I use instead of the native terminal that comes with the Mac OS. I then download all my ZSH, which is a framework for ZSH. Then the first thing that I do from here is to download Homebrew Package Manager and immediately install the tools that I need like Node.js, Git, and more. My current text editor of choice is Visual Studio Code. I like the workflow that it enables file management and its extensive list of helpful plugins that it comes with. And my favorite theme at the moment is the Monokai Pro, which is a paid theme, but the normal Monokai is free if you prefer that one. All right, now let's talk about my design setup. There are a lot of different great design tools that I use for different cases, and I'm going to break them down into different categories of design exercises that I go through per project. So let's go through them. Miro. I use Miro for a lot of different design activities. I've run workshops, built sitemaps, made user flows, and much more. It's basically my go-to tool when it comes to the preliminary stage of design and research, where I need to plan, test, and sketch activities and ideas. UI design. Figma is my go-to at the moment for 80% of my work, and this includes wireframing, documentations for developers, creating flows, designing UI, prototypes, basic animations, creating design systems, and more. Adobe XD. At the moment, I don't really use this a lot, but I do like to play around with it from time to time to see its new updates and abilities. And when I get a chance, I use it on a side project or a freelance project. Icons 8. When I don't need a custom design icon, I can for sure find a decent icon to use from Icons 8. Definitely recommended as it allows for different file formats and it has a vast library. It's also very simple to use. Adobe Illustrator. However, when I do need custom icons or complex illustration, vector work or logo design, my go-to is Illustrator. UI Interactions. I use Framer for more complex UI interactions. It's easy to learn and it's fast to use. It also has a familiar layout since it's similar to Figma and XD. After Effects. However, if my animation needs to be even more custom or complex, or if I'm animating illustrations and other SVG format content, then After Effects is definitely my go-to. Graphic Design and Graphics Content. Photoshop. For heavy editing, cutting something out, or any other photo editing needs I might have, I use Photoshop, as it does a better job than Figma. I also sometimes use it if I need very specific export formats of my imagery. Adobe Lightroom. I simply use this for editing my photos that I take with my camera, both for professional and personal use. Audio and video editing. Adobe Audition. This is my go-to when it comes to recording or editing audio or music, mostly for these videos. Premiere Pro. Last but not least is Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit all of these videos that you guys see. All right, that's it. Those are the main tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It is a lot, but it is also a collection of 12 plus years of learning and experience. I've slowly picked up each of the tools throughout the years based on the circumstances that I needed them for, but by no means do you need to know every single thing on this list. I have talked about this before, but when it comes to learning tools and skills, start with the ones that would help you out with your current needs and the ones that would help you out progress your career further. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you found this entertaining and useful, please like, share, and subscribe as all of those would help me out greatly. If you have any questions, just comment them down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.